Hi viewer, welcome to Safi Maxed. In this video, I would begin to discuss the basics of probability theory, a requirement for understanding the basic themes of statistical mechanics and quantum mechanics. So let us first get familiar with the terminology of probability theory. In this regard, the first thing to know is the concept of an event. An event is anything that takes place at a particular time at certain position in a given reference frame. For example, tossing up a coin, rolling off a dice or playing a cricket match. The next thing is to know about a sample space. The possible outcomes of an event constitute what we call a sample space. For example, tossing up a coin is an event with two possible outcomes. The rolling of a dice is an event with six possible outcomes and playing of a cricket match is an event with two possible outcomes. The sample spaces of these events are written in the form of these list. Omega super kind equals the list of two possible outcomes and those outcomes are represented by head and tail. Similarly, omega sub dice is written as the list of numbers ranging from 1 to 6 where each number corresponds to a face of a dice. And the sample space of cricket match again consists of two events and those events are represented by win and loss. The third thing is the concept of fair and biased events. An event is said to be fair if all of its outcomes are equally probable. For example, a fair kind is one which has equal chances for landing with either side up after it is tossed. From theoretical point of view, a fair kind is also called an ideal kind. On the contrary, a biased kind is one whose sides are unequally loaded and thus have different probabilities for the two possible outcomes. For example, if I attach something with a glue on one side of a fair kind, it becomes a biased one because the effect of gravity will turn the loaded side of the kind down and the opposite side will have larger probability to come up. Similarly, in a cricket match, a spin causing pitch is biased in the favor of ballers that usually reduce the rate of making runs for a batsman. The fourth thing we need to know is the probability function. The probability mass function is a quantization in the form of a number of each expected outcome of an event. This is usually denoted by the letter P and can have any value bounded between 0 and 1. That is, 0 less or equal to P and P less or equal to 1 and is usually written in the form P colon omega arrowhead and the number enclosed inside the square brackets. This notation means that P is a weight function on space omega that have values from 0 to 1 where the value 0 ensures the 100% not happening of an outcome and the value 1 ensures the 100% happening of an outcome of the events. This weird function is also called mass function. If every outcome of an event is equally probable and the number of total outcomes of an event is represented by capital M, then the mass function of i outcome is written as p sub i equals 1 over n. That is, every outcome has a probability equal to the inverse of the number of total expected outcomes of an event. The next concept related to the mass function is its normalization. The mass function is normalized and obeys the condition Somewhere, the mass function of all the outcome 
equals 1. That is summation over i p sub i equals 1. Thus, in the light of equation 4, the probability for each outcome in tossing of a fair kind is p tail equals p head equals 1 divided by 2. And for a dice, the probability of each face becomes p sub i equals 1 by 6. And under fair condition, the probability of win and loss for a team in a cricket match can be expressed as p win equals p loss equals half. Assigning equal probability to every possible outcome of an event is not a global fact. In some cases, this may not be true. In order to catch this idea, consider a box that contains five balls, two colored blue and three colored yellow. The ball are distinguishable only through their colors. If in this case an event corresponds to taking a ball out of the box and we are interested only in the color of a ball, then the possible outcomes in this case are just two. So the sample space in this case can be expressed as omega equals the list of yellow and blue. But the mass function of each color in this case is not balanced because for each ball to be taken out of the box the probability of take is 1 over 5 and there are three yellow balls which makes the probability of a yellow take three times greater than a single take so the probability of yellow take is written as p of yellow takes equal 3 divided by 5 and that of a blue tag the probability can be expressed as p of blue tag equals 2 divided by 5. We see that the probability of mass function of a tag corresponding to a color is not uniform. We can put the above discussion into a more general form by introducing the concept of a subspace of the total sample space. If omega 1 is a subset of a larger space omega, that is omega 1 is a subset of omega, then the probability of mass function of the total subspace is given by p of omega 1 equal sum over omega belongs to the capital omega 1 over p omega where the small omega is a possible outcome of the subspace capital omega sub 1. For example, in the example of balls, let the balls are labeled with first five English alphabets. Then the total sample space consists of five outcomes, one each correspond to the take of a single ball. So we write omega take equals the list of A, B, C, D and E. This total space can be expressed as a union of two subspaces, that is omega take equals omega of yellow takes union omega of blue takes where omega yellow take is a subspace consists of three yellow balls and is written as omega yellow take equals the list of a b and c and omega blue take is a subspace consists of two balls and is written as omega blue take equals D and E. In this notation, using equation 6, one can easily verify the results of equation 5a and 5b. For example, the total probability of the subspace of yellow tag can be expressed as P of omega yellow tag equals probability of ball A plus probability of ball B plus the probability of ball C. Since the take of 
every ball is equally probable therefore I can use the probability of each ball equal to 1 over 5 and summing them 3 times leads to 3 divided by 5. At the end I would say stay tuned I am bringing more on probability theory in this playlist and if you haven't yet subscribed to Safi Max just press the subscribe button and be a member of the list of subscribers of Safi Mixed.